Hey, um, we're just getting set up now for today's Simon Says. So bear with me the first 30 seconds or so just where I make sure uh, everything is, is running smoothly at my end. Um, and I better turn my phone off because we don't want any or too many distractions. Please let me know in the chat, in the in the kibitz box, in the chat. Uh, oh, thank you. You're already there. Mifra. Thank you, Mifra. Uh, Mifra straight in there telling me that you can see me and hear me which is which is great to uh great to hear and and see uh so we get started very shortly and i'd like to say hello to everyone hello and this is uh the last the last sort of simon says i'm gonna do before christmas so this is like a, a i thought i'd do a christmas themed stream well i say stream show as such uh, so I'm going to look at the Christmas tree opening variation, um, which I think is a really interesting way of playing against D4. It's a very interesting version of the, the Dutch defence. Um, as usual, I would like everyone in the chat who's watching this live to get involved with the show uh, as much as they can. So if you've got any questions for me uh, throughout the next hour, and we will end the show with a couple of puzzles as well, just to keep the puzzles thing going. But if you've got any questions for me, then do type them in the, the box below. And hopefully this hour long show will teach you some interesting things about an opening, which I've played for cool, 30 years. It shows my age now. I've played this opening for 30 whole years. And this kind of opening is I've got some great results with. Maybe I'm one of the world's leading experts in the Dutch defense. And I certainly know some of the ideas quite well in this opening. Um, but hello anyway. And if you're watching this, the archive, hello as well. Uh, do you like the way I've painted my, my wall green as well? So the reason I've painted this, I'm hoping in future on my own YouTube channel and my XSplit, you know, my XSplit channel, it's a green screen, it's actually paint. And, and I'm hoping in future, I'm gonna be able to put some graphics behind so we can have i don't know what we can have behind if you've got any ideas that'd be great we have to have the chess base logo up there but we'll, we'll have other things as well uh coming up or, or behind me just to just so you know what's going on there but anyway on with the chess so what are we going to be looking at today well the main thing i'm gonna give you a lesson on is uh the following opening and the main position we're concentrating on comes about and it's an opening you are going to be playing with the black pieces so i suggest now if you're looking at this that you switch the board on your own computer so you can see it from the black side because i always think when you're learning an opening and i hope you kind of do this at home and stuff that you should always learn the opening you, you know the opening you're trying to learn look at it from the color you're trying to learn it from so if you're looking at if it's an opening or try and learn with black always make sure the black pieces are near you because when you play your game the patterns you remember when you're learning will be easier to recall so uh, make sure you have the blackboard at the bottom and the opening we're looking at uh, basically comes about in a couple of different ways but it starts mainly with Dutch defense, so with F5, and it's a mixture between two different types of Dutches. Now, first of all, I think it should be worth pointing out that White's main strategy against the Dutch defense and what most top players have been playing for, um, I don't know, decades, 30 years while I've played this, is systems with G3. So systems where white plays g3, whether it's here or a bit later, are the main ways that white is supposed to get an opening advantage against the Dutch. I mean, of course, there are lots of other ways white can play, but we can't cover them in this one hour show. Um, you know, if a, a little tip I will give you that if white doesn't play g3 early uh, and avoids playing it, but plays of e3, let's say at some point he plays e3 maybe not now but at some point then we can always try to put our bishop upon b7 and this is something which has been uh, advertised black does uh, you know for a long time that's really why white plays g3 uh, this this is aimed to stop black from playing b6 now uh, here we're going to be looking at knight to f6 so the standard two moves 
and now after this well let's say bishop g2 and remember there's a lot of different move subtleties you can use in order to get this opening so in this position now as black you can either go g6 e6 or d6 so it's a very flexible opening now the way I've mainly played the Dutch throughout my life is with e6. I've mainly played e6 here. And the way I've normally played the Dutch after let's say c4, I've normally played in this position bishop e7 and now let's say white brings his knights out. So knight to f3, obviously black castles, white castles. And here, the, the, my speciality for most of my life has been the move d6. And this move d6 is, is the so-called classical Dutch. And this is something I've had great success with. I, I, I beat Boris Gelfand in this position. And it was the first game that Boris Gelfand lost um, with uh, the white pieces after his world championship match against Vishiwan Anand uh, about six years ago, something like that. And I managed to beat him with this move d6. Now, before we look at what I'm going to suggest, what are the advantages of playing d6 here? Well, the advantages of playing this opening, and one of the main ideas of this whole opening, is to support the e5 square and to try to play the move e5 at some point. So black really wants to move the pawn on e6 to e5. And another thing that black often does in this variation is to maneuver the queen on d8 around to h5. So these are really the two main ideas here, e5 and moving the queen around to h5, the, these two ideas here. For example, um, I've had a couple of games, let's say knight c3, and now um, knight to e4, and I'm not going to show you the theory, this is not what we're looking at today, but something like knight takes knight, queen takes, bishop f6, because the bishop controls the e5 square, and now b3, knight to c6, controlling the e5 square, and after bishop b2, e5. And this is one of the main ideas of, of, of the uh, the Dutch, the classical Dutch, which I've played most of my life. But the problem at the moment with this setup for black is that it seems that after knight to e4, one of black's main ideas in this opening is to move the bishop on e7 to f6. This is a really important idea. This bishop, which I'm flashing here, needs to come to f6 because on f6 it supports e5 and this takes time to do so for example here white can play knight takes knight straight away and this theoretically at the moment is the main problem that black has with this opening so the opening i'm going to be concentrating on today is a mixture between this setup where you play d6 but i'm trying to improve on this by first of all putting my bishop which is on e7 onto g7 because when it's on g7 it controls this square better so it's a mixture between the like i say the classical dutch and the leningrad dutch so let's go back to the start so let's say we go f5 g3 knight to f6 bishop g2 now you can go e6 here but after something like c4 the move order I'm recommending that you play is now G6. And the reason this is called the Christmas tree variation, and it was first called this in a book, I believe um, by, oh, I've got it here actually. It's a book that I actually helped write as well. I think it came out in 2008. Let me just get the book. And these are the two books and they're a bit old now. And some of the theory is a bit lacking, but I might as well show you the history of this uh, opening because everything has some kind of history. Now, the first time I think this was came out was in this book. Let's get it the right way around. And this was a dangerous weapons book. And as you can see, there were three authors, including myself. But actually, 
It's a bit dirty. I must have spilt coffee all over it. But I didn't actually write the chapter on this Christmas free variation. It was actually Richard Palliser, who's a well-known international master. And I think this book came out in 2008. And this was, oh, maybe not actually. Oh, 2009. But then later on, um, Moskalenko talked about it in this book, The Diamond Dutch, which is a much more modern book, but he called it uh, the Flying Fortress variation. So it's got two names, but as it's Christmas, I thought we'd have a look at this particular line. And it's a very interesting line. And the point is, you make this kind of Christmas tree with your pawns. So this is your general setup you go for. And your main idea is to play in this setup. You want to play, as we did a minute ago, Bishop G7, let's say you castle, and then d6 and e5. This is your main idea. And it's actually quite simple to play. I'm just going to tell you the basic rules that you need to know in order to give this opening um, uh, you know, a go. Chess robot, you're, you're correct. A chess book with coffee spilt over it. At least I've read the book. At least you can see I've actually used the book rather than you know just put it on the book pile. How many... I'm amazed. When I used to teach chess... I'm amazed how many times I've gone over to someone's house. I don't know if you guys watching this have the same thing, but you go over to someone's house to teach them chess and they've got shelves and shelves of books. And you ask them, wow, you've got loads of books. You know, you must know your openings really well. And then they, they, they respond by saying, well, I haven't really read any of these, these books. I mean, how many books do you guys have which you haven't actually read or opened? I think this this is one of the problems, you know. This is why I prefer videos. I, I prefer videos as an easy way to learn. But anyway, let's continue with what I'm recommending here. And I'm, I'm just trying to do this step by step in a way to sort of try to tell you everything which I think you, you need to know. So this is your first kind of thing you aim for. You aim for this Christmas tree. And now um, what do you do next? Well, let's say white develops. So white is going to develop both of his knights and castle. This is the main position. So it doesn't really matter what knight he brings out. Let's say knight to f3. And now where do we put our bishop? Well, the whole point of this is we go bishop g7. So if you know the Leningrad Dutch, the Leningrad Dutch is basically where you start by putting your bishop on g7. So this is, this is a mix, like I said, between the Leningrad and the classical. And let's say white now plays a normal move like castles, what could be more normal than that. So we now castle. And the main position we're concentrating on today is now knight to c3. And here, black now plays d6. And this is our main position. I'm just concentrating on this position today because this is really the starting point of the Christmas tree variation. Now, like I say, white setup that he's played here, you might not get in all your games, but at top level, this happens in 90% of games. And it really is meant to be white's best way of playing because the bishop on g2 is a fantastic, like, cannonball shooting across the board there, um, attacking, you know, all, all of these squares. Well, it's a bit like a, a, a hedgehog, a chess player is saying. Uh, but you already have a pawn on f5. So it's actually more like a king's Indian defense. If you think about it, it's very similar to a king's Indian defense because in the king's Indian, when you're playing the king's Indian defense as black, you want to play e5 and only later f5. What you're doing in this opening, you're playing f5 first, and then you're trying to play e5. So it's a bit like, it's more like a king's Indian defense. But the great thing about this opening is there's really not any theory on it. I mean, I found these two books here, but they're quite old books. And the, the, the analysis is very short. It's one chapter, a couple of pages in these books. So there's not much theory. So your, your opponent won't know what to do, which is great. But the one thing you need to remember to play here, and this is one of your main ideas, is you want to play e5, e5, e5. Remember that. Your bishop on g7 supports that, that move. Now, before we look at this any further, let me just show you another move order you might want to play to get this, because it's up to you what you do. Let's say white now plays knight to f3 first. You have to be very flexible at the start, because, you know, if your opponent does something strange, 
like bishop to g5 here you have to okay you might not be able to get your, your your desired setup but we can't as i say look at everything in this one hour but let's say he plays knight to f3 well here I, there's nothing wrong with knight to f6 and we're really only concentrating on playing this setup when white plays g3 because as i mentioned before if white does not play g3 you have other ideas you can try but g3 is the main idea now like i've also said you can now pick between e6 d6 or g6 a lot of people play this by first going g6 trying to get the leningrad dutch and now bishop g2 bishop g7 castles castles and now white needs to build up his center so c4 getting two pawns in the center and here i prefer the move e6 but d6 is now this is the main line leningrad dutch this is the most common dutch opening you will see knight to c3 and here there's loads of moves that have been played loads and loads of moves but the move we're playing is e6 and we can get this position as i've shown you already a couple of different ways now what are the advantages of playing e6 here over other moves well in the leningrad dutch if you play let's say queen e8 something like this white often has the move d5 and d5 tries to home in on the e6 square this square here and this can be a little bit annoying because if you try to play e5 which is a move you want to play white can always capture on pass on pawn takes e6 and whenever white plays this you don't get your two pawns in the center so the way we're trying to do this is by going e6 straight away and the point now is that black doesn't have to fear a move such as this move d5 because let's get you involved what would be a good move for for uh, black here what should black play now what would you play if you were black now so this is one of the main ideas let's say white played d5 what would be a good move for black to play here i'm assuming it's a good move it's a move i'd probably play without thinking at all what would be a good move to play here any ideas what would be a good move for black to play let's just see if you're you guys are awake well done boy well done cb69 that's right the the move you're aiming to play anyway is e5 this is the move you're aiming to play because then you get two pawns in a central position and these pawns can be very strong for the attack i mean what you're trying to do in this kind of position you've got three ideas again e4 is one of the main ideas pushing on because then your bishop will be opened up that dark square bishop another idea is to if you want to play very aggressively is to go f4 attack like this and you can even play h6 g5 so you've got three pawns coming at your opponent's king so this is what you're aiming for okay well first of all let me just give you a taste and now this goes back last year i i had a game against uh english grandmaster mark hebden and this is one of the first times i tried out this opening and it worked extremely well so let me show you how uh the opening went and this is our main starting position after e6 so i'm going to talk about the main ideas so what do we do here well okay first of all white has an option now what does white do against this now if white does nothing we are going to try to play the move e5 so if white does nothing at all what's our our idea because chess is basically a, a, a game of stopping our opponent and doing our own ideas so what are our own ideas here well we'll come to uh, mark's ideas in a minute boy and you've got it completely correct boy um but what's black's ideas how is black going to support the move e5 because at the moment this square e5 is defended by two p two things pawn on d4 knight on f3 so clearly you want to play the move e5 but you need to support this move so you need to support this square now if you play knight to c6 too soon let's just say white plays king h1 which is a rubbish move now we want to support e5 but a typical mistake here would be knight to c6 now why is this a typical mistake this is a mistake which i would not play I would not play straight away I, I i i don't want to play this unless i have a good follow-up it's possible 
but it's not my favorite way to do, to prepare e5. Why is knight to c6 maybe not my favorite move here? What can white play here? So let's imagine, well done, Frank. Yeah, well done, Frank, straight away. And I wrote about this in my, my first chess book, Play the Classical Dutch, d5. d5 now works. Why is this better? Because we can't play e5. We don't have time to play e5 because our knight is attacked. Now, if we take on d5, this is horrible because after pawn takes, again, we can't get our two pawns in the center. And this pawn on d5 is very dangerous for us. If we move our knight somewhere, well, white can take on e6 and we get that structure we just looked at, which we, we, we can play, but we don't always want unless we have to. So our normal plan is not to play knight to c6, but I would be trying to do two different things here. Either going queen to e8 or e7, then we can push the pawn forwards. Um, queen to e8 is sometimes my preferred move. Because the point is, let's say, let's. I'm just saying white doesn't do anything. What's our plans? Well, let's say king g1, rubbish. Now we can play e5. This is what we want to do if we had a, a number of moves in a row. This is our plan coming together. Now, why, why did I put the queen on e8? Because now we've got exactly what we want in a position. This pawn can be a very good attacker. It can come forwards. If I had gone queen e7 here and done the same thing, which is sometimes okay, but you have to now watch out for pawn takes pawn and knight to d5. This is very annoying because this knight attacks our queen. It can be a little bit annoying. It, here it's maybe not so bad, but you have to watch out for it. Um, so this is one thing you should be doing. Simply trying to move your queen behind your pawn and then pushing the pawn. But also, as Boy has pointed out, the other idea, which you should you could be doing, and well pointed out, Boy, you obviously know the Dutch well, is to play your knight into e4. And now you can see the real point of having the bishop on this square. The bishop on g7 is a lot better here. And now you simply want to play e5 in one move. So, for example, I don't know, let's say king g1. Well, first of all, we might as well exchange knights. And now we can play e5 again. So this is your other main idea. So this shows you what we're trying to do as black. You're trying to get this e5 move in. And I generally think if you can play e5 and you can get these two pawns here, I mean, this is what, you, this is what you're aiming for anyway, but this is your plan. Okay, well, let, let's go back to the game I had against Mark Hedburn. He was following a game of Geary. So the game went... Um, in this position after e6 he went rook to e1 now we're seeing as a boy pointing out one of white's main ideas and like i said chess is about stopping our opponent and doing our own ideas so what is white's idea behind rook to e1 come on a1 should be able to work this out if it is white to move yes white would want to play pawn to e4 now, in my opinion, this move rook to e1 is white's best move in, in, in this opening variation. So we know what white wants to play. How should we respond? Just by, just by uh, me telling you some hints before that. Should we go queen behind the pawn or should we go knight to e4? Which of our plans is better? Because when your opponent plays a move, rook to e1, you always need to work out what your opponent's trying to do. He wants to play e4. So what do we do? Well, of course, as a chess player and um, slight, oh, God, my German is so bad. Slidelet chess, apologies. We should, of course, stop his idea. We stop him playing e4, but we try to continue our idea of e5. So I played knight to e4. And again, as long as you think like this, this opening will come together very nicely. Now here, Mark played um, queen to c2 which forces um, my knight on e4 to make a decision. Now, as a rule, what you want to do when this knight is forced to move, we just take on c3. It's very simple. So we take on c3 and already here, funnily enough, you know, um, white has to be quite careful how to play. How does white recapture on c3? Well, in the game, white it white played pawn takes c3 this is the best move no doubt about it now against queen takes c3 what should black do so have a think about this what would you do here if you were black 
you know what you want to play you want to play e5 remember this is your main idea can you play it now because if you can play it you should play it imagine you're black here you've now opened up your bishop can you play e5 can you play this move can you play this move now can you play it now now the problem with c5 c5 is okay c5 is okay but positionally positionally i avoid this move because it looks natural you're putting pressure on this square but what you've got to remember is it's better having these two pawns pawns on e5 and f5 next to each other e5 is your main idea never forget that don't get don't don't get distracted these pawns here work so well together they're next to each other and they can support each other the f pawn is supporting e4 the e pawn is supporting f4 good evening pawn pusher as well so it you know c5 is okay <coughs> but it's not really positionally helping out so much you've only got one idea that's to attack d4 um and yeah i mean as a chess player's very good explanation there um the pawn here often wants to come to c6 to control this square and blunt the bishop out c5 may look nice for one move but after a move like e3 what is your plan what is your plan here because d4 is now very well defended and i just don't like having a pawn on c5 this pawn wants to i'd rather it was on c7 to defend d6 because let's just let's just show how some natural moves could go like knight c6 maybe b3 i just want to go bishop here what do we play now i don't know queen e7 bishop b2 what is black doing now i mean i think you know just d4 is very easy for white to defend white can defend this with everything it's very easy to defend this is more i would say like superficial meaning it doesn't have as much substance to it as playing e5 for example here i already prefer white because I don't know what your plan is here let's say you ever play e5 now now the problem here is that after pawn takes e5 i want this pawn back on on c7 because i can't control d5 i can't control d6 these are general rules and the one thing i want you to remember is that really the whole idea of this opening is to play e5 so here if you can play e5 you should play e5 and in actual fact e5 is already in my opinion equal for black this move works well it looks like you can't play this but black black is just do i think doing very well here for example uh pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn and now what does white do because we're threatening to play something like e4 if white plays knight takes e5 he's stepping into a pin so all we should do now is pressurize the knight with a move such as knight to d7 and here i i think black's better already black is better now um we're gonna win a, a pawn back we've got queen e7 now really trying to pressurize this one and white has to play f4 but now just queen e7 and we're gonna take this one we're gonna win a pawn back and we have a very nice position so if you can play e5 play e5 don't get carried away with c5 e5 and what else can white do here well if white tries to play e4 this is a very good question for you and this is another very thematic thing you should know about you have a couple of okay moves here there are a couple of moves here but after e4 here what would you play now there are two good moves here two good moves that that uh black can play have a think what you would play i would say one of these moves is always something i'm thinking about when white plays e4 and i have a pawn on e5 there's a there's something in my mind that i, I that's been stuck there for 20 years since i was 20 you know 18 years old and that is if in this position there's always one good way to meet e4 as long as i have a pawn on e5 
but there are two good moves here for black what would you play if you're black here let's hit let's hit it doesn't matter if you're wrong doesn't matter if you're wrong you it's best to suggest try to you know if you're wrong you learn more so what what would you play boyo that is the move i'm thinking of straight away straight away a chess player has got both the moves correct uh margaret correct uh the move i'm always thinking of is just f4 i love this move f4 this is my first thought because this is what you want to do i, I might i might even go g5 g4 um but i want to play bishop g4 knight to c6 this move f4 i already prefer black i already think that black is better here after the move f4 this is the move you want to play and you can see how it's so good having a pawn on e5 it supports your attack as well as this knight to c6 is a good move there's nothing wrong with this you're developing a piece you're controlling a square and you're going to play f4 next so this is also good but basically after the move let's just go back so you can try to remember this after the move rook to e1 knight to e4 is uh the best idea and then queen c2 we take on c3 and if they play queen takes c3 we just play e5 boom now the best move here is for white to play pawn takes c3 because now the queen is not in the line of the bishop so what should we play here what should we play here after this move what should we play here this should be natural now what should black play now now i'm going to be honest this whole variation um i i do like but there is one slight variation which has a slight problem for black which has only been played once in the history of chess but we're going to come to that at the end but of course here you should play e5 of course you get your move in now after e5 giri anish giri and other top players have now always taken on e5 but i did have one game against um the russian player yakovenko 2750 and he played e4 here now e4 we'll come to later on but e4 is the biggest test of this variation this is the biggest test and you know this is the at the moment the one line which is slightly causing problems for the christmas tree so we'll come to this later on but it's only been played once by yakovenko um, and i don't think it's in the database so i'm in giving you these secret lines now as well as we're going on but what mark played was pawn takes e5 pawn takes e5 and now in this position mark played bishop to a3 so attacking my rook okay but i thought well uh, I, I don't mind putting my rook on e8 and now mark played e4 and in this position well i i played i played a move which is okay uh but what is the basic rule just to keep things simple what is the basic rule when they play e4 and you have a pawn on e5 yes well done well done well done guys uh, it's still in the memory it's still fresh f4 and actually giri had this position like i said as white against uh, a dutch grandmaster reindeer man quite appropriate rain i, I don't know if it's, you pronounce it reindeer man but reindeer man playing the christmas tree variation around christmas um what was it was it a draw I, I think giri won that game but in that game uh black did not play f4 f4 is a novelty it's never actually been played before and it's not what i played but this move i consider to be i'd love to have this position honestly i take this position against anyone in the world with confidence now um the idea of this is if you're given a chance here you're probably going to go g5 so white should probably take here and now you don't take back you don't take back because you could take back but then maybe e5 is a little bit annoying i think the best move here the best move for black here is to play knight to c6 uh, a chess player this is the move i prefer a chess player because in actual fact we're now asking the question to white we're making white's decision quite tricky we develop a piece we want to move our queen to f6 next white has weakened his king by taking on f4 so we're sacrificing a pawn but this move knight to c6 in my opinion is very tricky for white to deal with i mean what can white play now let's have a look at some lines after knight to c6 well um 
what can he do? Let me just get my analysis up. If white takes another pawn, um, okay, let's have a look. So rook to d1 uh, is very natural, of course. And after rook to d1, I'm just gonna, I've got this all the, all my, I've got my secrets saved on another computer. I didn't actually put them here, but you can save the work here. By the way, at the end of this one hour, if you're watching this live, a very good tactic to save all the analysis is on the keypad, press control C, save the work, and then you can paste it into your own chess space. So you keep all this analysis for yourself. Okay, so let's have a look. So if rook to d1, well, of course we go queen to f6. And now after, let's say pawn takes e5, how does this position end out? Well, we now go knight takes e5, and here, well, I think white is forced to, to make a decision because the knight is attacked, so white should probably take here, and after a love exchange, we just go queen takes e5. We're only one pawn down now in this position, but I think this must be fantastic play. We have ideas of bringing the bishop around to f4. We have ideas of playing queen to h5, and bishop to g4, bishop to h3, is only one pawn. Okay, let's have a look at this a bit more. So a chess player is suggesting bishop to c1, trying to cover some squares. Well, even here, you have to remember that white's pawn structure is very weak over here. I mean, we might be able to win our pawn back straight away. We could just maybe play queen takes, queen takes c3. I mean, if I play queen takes c3 immediately, I can't be worse here. Black cannot be worse. I've got my pawn back. Uh, my bishop is very strong. My other bishop is going to be very strong here. This can't be worse for black. I cannot be worse here. I'm already at least equal. I mean, maybe I have something better here. Maybe I can even play bishop to e6 and play like this. My bishops are lovely. You know, they're lovely, lo lo lovely bishops. So, uh, you know, this is, this is um, a new idea. Um, so let's just go back so we can just remind ourselves how we got to this position. So this is the main position we're concentrating on, this Christmas tree position. And it's E6 is the move to get there. We'll have a look at move orders. Now, rook to E1, the main test. White wants to play E4. So we go knight to E4. Queen to C2, forcing the knight to make a decision. We take on C3. White should take back with a pawn so that his queen is safer. We now play E5. In here, if white takes on e5, we take back with the pawn. Now, bishop to a3 is theoretically meant to be the best move. So we play rook to e8. We'll have a look at other options a bit later on. In this position, I'm ready to play e4. If I can play pawn to e4, I'm very happy. Because let's say, let's say I can do, let's say rook to b1, I go e4. Why is e4 a good move? Because when the knight moves, the bishop on g2 is dead. It's completely dead. Black is a lot better here. White's pawns on the queen side are very bad. My bishop is fantastic. And your bishop on g2 is dead. So remember that. So white has to play e4. What do we do against this? We play f4. When white takes on f4, knight to c6. And I think this gives fantastic compensation here. I mean, what can white do now? I mean... White has to be very careful because if, if white maybe plays f5, I thought this was white's best move. And now I was just thinking queen to f6. Given a chance, I will win my pawn back and bring my bishop in. But if white takes on g6, I'm just going to take back with my pawn. And I'm a pawn down here, but I think I have great play against the white king. But it's a very important maneuver here. Now, let's say white plays a move, a logical move, like rook to d1. Now, there's a very important idea. Well, that's, that's actually bad because maybe bishop g4 is just very strong. Uh, that looks very strong, actually, bishop g4. Um, so that's one important idea. Let, let's say that white plays knight to, knight to d2 to avoid this idea. What would be a very good maneuver from black here? And then we're, we're going to move on to the next bit after this. So what, what's a, a very good maneuver? Actually, it's amazing how quickly time goes when I'm trying to explain the, the, these variations. It just goes so quick. OK, but what is it? Let's imagine you're black. Oh, boy, boy, you're on fire today. Is it boy or can I say a boy? -y? I don't know. Boy or boy. -y. Brilliant. This is you've got it. You've hit. We say in England, you've hit a boy. -y. 
Boy! Okay, we say you've hit the nail on the head. This is a very English expression. This knight transferring to f4 it is such a strong idea. Remember this idea. This is only works when it's not a pawn on g3 to defend f4. But knight to d8, knight to e6, knight to f4 it, it is, is, is practically... White is just going to get checkmated. Um, looks horrible. Okay, anyway, um, this is what I'd recommend you play here. There's a lot to cover, so I'm going to move on. And what I do recommend you do, once we've looked at the lesson today, I'll take questions at the end, but maybe have a look at this video once or twice to remind yourself, and then you should be ready to play this. But like I said, at the end of this lesson, I'm going to show you the, the slight theoretical white's best line at the moment. But first of all, um, if we go back in the game, I would play f4 in future. I played knight to c6 in this game, but to be honest, let me just show you what happened, just, just in case you're interested. Rook to d1 was played. Um, ju -ju -ju -ju. Okay, I've just got, I've just got a, I've just got a, whoa, my monitor's just turned off. Thanks, monitor. No, don't do that. Okay, <laughs> I've got a new computer set up here. And, and when it says your monitor is going to turn off in 30 seconds, it's like a bloody countdown, you know? It's like your computer is going to self-destruct in 30 seconds. Okay, well, you know, you'll better see me, but I won't better see anything. Okay, I think I've stopped that. I'll show you how the game went against... Remember, my opponent here was a very strong grandmaster, but I got a winning position very quickly. Queen f6. I think when you've got these two pawns here, generally you should be okay. And now my opponent took on f5. I took with a bishop. And after queen b3, I just went bishop g4. And I've got a very good game here. Okay, and I think this is a good introduction to this. Let's move on to uh, another setup that um, white might play. So I'm going to move on to another game now. Now, this, this next game is a game between uh, two uh, grandmasters from Holland. And again, it's the same opening. Let's have a look how the opening moves go again. This is just to remind you. I want to go back from the start to remind you how the opening goes. So it goes f5. Now, actually, the way I play the way I play this, I play e6 on move one because this avoids a lot of the gambit lines which you may encounter from f5. I mean, I avoid the Staunton gambit. I avoid this annoying bishop g5 move. But if you play e6, you have to be ready to play the French defence. But I do play the French defence, so it's okay. Now this game continued g3, knight to f6, bishop g2, and now you can play e6, d6, or you can play g6. In this position, Frizo played g6, white developed, knight to f3, bishop g7, both sides castled, and now c4, d6, you can even play e6 here. Again, it doesn't really matter. But d6, knight c3, and now e6, the Christmas tree variation. This idea. And here, we're going to see what happens if white plays a different move. Now, in this position, white played queen to c2. Now, we haven't looked at this, but obviously white's idea now is to play e4 again. Now, there's a couple of interesting ideas here, actually. Um... I was watching a game recently from uh, the London Chess Classic, and it was a game between Mickey Adams and Magnus Carlsen. Now, Magnus Carlsen had the white pieces in that game, and uh, it was quite interesting because the main recommended move here in, in this position, and I think black is absolutely fine, is now knight to c6. Now, if you can remember, if you, this is really important, but the difference here the problem with this move before was d5 but now as long as the queen is on c2 this is not so bad because we can play knight to b4 gaining a move against the queen so this is um an idea which uh is okay now another interesting idea there was a game that magnus carlsen played it's very similar where magnus carlsen played a very interesting idea of, of knight to h5 now, I don't know if knight to h5 works here, but this is something I, I would investigate more. And the point is, after e4, you play f4. 
So that's something maybe you want to investigate at home a little bit more. Quite interesting, quite interesting. But the safest idea and a rule here, a rule to remember, as soon as the queen goes to c2, you can play knight to c6. The reason is because you can gain a tempo against the queen with your knight. So only now do you play this idea of knight to c6. And these lines, I think, are absolutely fine for black. I mean, I think... Uh, the best move for white here is to play d5 anyway but this is now the, the the difficulty that white has behind d5 is the bishop on g7 now becomes a great piece um let's have a look so we play knight to b4 we're attacking the queen now the queen has to move to a square where it attacks the knight that's clear because if the queen went back to d1, we can do what we said before. We can play e5, e5. This is the move we want to play. Get two of our pawns here. Remember, if we can play e5, we do. So white needs to attack the knight. And now we have to do something with our knight. But I simply think the move knight to a6 is fine for black. Because if we can play e5, we will do. But after pawn takes e6, the difference between this now and the line we had before is that all of our pieces now get into the game. Look, knight to c5. Our knight is very good here, attacking the queen. Queen to c2. And now bishop takes e6. Every single black piece is developed. We are attacking a pawn. We're going to put a knight on e4. This is equal. This is at least equal for, for, for black. I mean, this is the kind of position you should be very happy playing. Um, I mean, this looks very normal. Our plan here is to bring up, go queen e7, rook to e8. It's a very nice position to play. I mean, you, you, must, you must agree with me on that here, I'm sure. So the one thing to remember is when queen to c2 is played, you can play knight to c6 because you can make d5 with knight to b4 okay so what happens if uh, after knight to c6 white does not play d5 well if white plays something like a3 what should you play here this should be now immediate what should you play here what should black play here uh, i know i'm repeating myself but i'm trying to get the point across boy boy boom pawn pusher yes of course, now we play e5. Now, already I prefer black. I'm not being biased. I think here I prefer black. I prefer black's position because I've got my two pawns here. So white can't do this. And this is a typical mistake you'll get lower down because all oh, everything's working here for black. So in this game, Spike played rook to d1. Now, in actual fact, I think this move is simply a mistake because, yes, it does stop e5 for one move. Because if we play e5 now, the rook is pinning the pawn. But I don't think it helps white at all. Now in the game, uh, Friso played... Um, Friso here played queen to e7. Um, which is okay. But I actually quite like the move here, queen to e8. I prefer the queen being here because of the reason I mentioned to you earlier, and that is when we play e5, we're not going to get hit, our queen is not going to get hit by a knight to this square. Uh, and if knight to b5 now, an interesting idea now, actually, is now we play queen to e7. Now, why have I done it like this? Because I want this knight to not be coming in to this square. So... I mean, let's see. I don't know. This is just something I'm thinking of. Something like here. Knight here. You've got to move your queen again. So where do you move your queen? And this is a bit similar to last time, isn't it? Queen b3. Knight to a6. I'm, I'm doing the same thing I did before. What do you play here? Remember, I'm going to go e5. I'm going to play e5 here. If you, if you don't take on e6, I'm going to play e5. And if I play e5, I think I'm better with black. I must be better. If you play knight on fd4, surely I just play e5. I play e5 here. This is exactly what I want, this position. Let's say you go knight to e6. Um, I'm just going to take it. And here, I just have to be a little bit careful. 
I could play a couple. Of, I've got a couple of good moves here. Your bishop is good. So I'm thinking, how do I kill your bishop on g2? Well, I've got a couple of ideas. I could go knight c5. I can even play, if I go c6 here, maybe you take on d6. So I'm thinking maybe e4. Let's just kill the bishop. I want to kill your one good piece. And now I want to go knight c5, knight takes e6. I want to, you know, this must be great. This must be great. I've got my pawn structure in. So these are the kind of things, you know, we're, we're trying to think. So, you know, it, it's funny. It's funny how this line can work so well. So what I do, basically, if rook d1 was played, if I was black, I'd go queen e8. And I'd probably just try to play e5 next. Let's have a look how the game developed. So because free is one anyway, um, it went rook d1. And now queen e7. And even here, even here, I, I think black's equal here. But you have to be a little bit careful about when you play e5 because of knight d5. So you just have to be careful here. So let's just see how black developed here. Uh, okay, so it went, and I like his next move. His next move, I think, is excellent. I think black's next move is, is a really beautiful idea. And one for, I didn't, I, this maneuver I'm about to show you now. Um, has only for me become much more important and I've only I've only become aware of this maneuver in the last couple of years and that is the maneuver of putting the knight onto f7 because this knight on f7 is brilliant because the knight there controls e5 it controls g5 and it controls d6 three key squares so this is the maneuver I wanted to show you knight to d8 maneuvering the knight to f7 this is a very nice square for the knight you get it nearer to the king side later on that will help you b4 knight to f7 i i really love this maneuver that frizo does something well worth remembering i've done this in the dutch recently quite a lot myself and it's worked very well uh rook to c1 and now i'm not sure here uh, if Frizo needs to play the way he does. If I was black here, if I was playing black here, I would not play the moves that black plays. I would have played here probably just c6 because I want to control this square and I want to play e5. I would just play this straight away. I know you can play b5. I don't care so much. If you play b5 here, I'm probably just going to play e5 anyway on time. I'm just going to play e5. And yes, you're attacking me on the queen side, but I'm attacking you on the king side, so I'm happy. And my knight does a very good job of defending my key, key squares. Um, so I think black's absolutely happy here. I mean, okay, in the game it went bishop d7, and black played a lot of moves just to, first of all, I don't think he needs to do this, but eventually he played e5. And as we're going to see around here, he got this e4 move in with an unbalanced position. But after knight to g4, black is attacking very well. So again, this is kind of middle game ideas. This kind of stuff. The bishops open up. The knight is good. You, you must be happy with this kind of position if you got it in a game. Okay, let's move on to something else. We're running out of time. It's unbelievable how quickly these things go. Okay, let's move on. Um, I want to try to cover as much as I can. Okay, we're going to avoid the next game which shows something I've already pointed out. And that game is the same, so we avoid that. Okay, this was the Anishgiri game, but we've already looked at that, so we don't need to do that. Um, well, thank, thank you, HS player, for saying the show needs to be longer than one hour. Yeah, may, maybe, I, you know, it's so hard to, to teach an opening in one hour, but I also think it's very, you know, there is a problem with this i'm going to show you maybe in a second but i think it's just one hour is enough to give you ideas it's enough to give you ideas and you know i do understand the dutch very well so even if you know even if you don't want to play this opening it's going to help you understand the dutch more i think um so you know it, it's you know it's a short and snappy show i try to do something different every week but i thank you for the nice comments anyway you know i'm giving my secrets away here I might even do a DVD, a short DVD on this and put a lot more work into it at, at some point in the future. A cheap DVD, just so you guys can have it. You know, I need to make some money as well. <laughs> okay, anyway, we're not, we won't look at this one because we've already covered this, so I just wanted to get everything. Uh, okay, we had another one here. What's this one? 
Aha, I, I do want to show this game very quickly. So let's, uh, okay, I'm going to go very quick now through the opening moves. We've seen it before. Now, this is the guy I call Reindeer Man playing the Christmas tree. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it, the name. But let's just go through the moves quickly. And we get to our main position. And hopefully you are now aware of how to do this. And after E6, we have our Christmas tree. Now, after Queen C2, what is the simplest way to play? Well, now that the queen is on c2, we can go knight to c6 because we have this tempo. But what do we do if, if white plays e4? This is very important because in this line, white can play e4. He can. We haven't stopped him. What do we do here? Well, in this position, there's a very simple way to play. Um, I mean, for example, here, if I was black, I'll be honest with you. If I was black here, I would really consider playing e5 straight away i mean this this is probably okay and it, if I, I think when i check this computer the computer gives this as equal pretty much equal it says yeah okay it gives this equal so i think e5 is okay i think this is okay uh this is an equal way because if you um if you can get this in this is this is uh this is okay um um i mean i'm just i've just been told by by one of the bosses at, at chess chess base that there's no stream streaming now so uh there is a stream you guys are you guys are you guys are you guys are here watching me <laughs> so um okay yeah i've just been told by one of the people at chess uh, chess base that there's no stream people are saying there's no stream i'm streaming you guys can hear me and see me can't you i hope so it's working here okay okay good as long as you guys can see me it's uh, it's a uh, it's okay good i just wanted to check <laughs> okay right so i think e5 is okay i think e5 is okay um but there's a, also another way sorry one second um so there's another way you can play and the other way i think you can play which is even simpler here is um to take on e4 so we can play in this position uh just take on e4 and after um knight takes e4 we take again on e4 and now queen takes e4 now one thing i should become aware of make you aware of here is that in the classical dutch so that's the remember the first dutch that i showed you the bishop was not on g7 the bishop was on e7 now in these positions the bishop is much better here because it attacks d4 straight away so this is a much much better line now you can in this position play um e5 and e5 is given by uh i, look, I was look, doing my homework earlier e5 is given by richard palliser in his book and he dedicates something actually like four pages to it but i think there's a better move here and the better move i think is to to wait for e5 until you're until you're better placed so i like queen to f6 i think this is just a very good move and this attacks the pawn on on d4 we're not worried about d5 because if they play d5 okay you can tell me what what would be a good answer here and this is something to do with your bishop on c8 this bishop can come to life very quickly I mean, we can even play knight to b4 here, but I mean, uh, well, I mean, I, I like just taking here and then playing something like bishop to f5. I mean, this must be okay again. The bishop's coming to life. Um, so I think bishop to e3 is, four, is, is a good move. And now here, I'd simply try to get my bishop on c8 in the game and my rook on a8. So I go bishop d7, and then I go rook to e8, and then and only then would i play e5 and black in my eyes is at least equal here there's no problems at all here so um this is the way to to handle let's go back to the main position after e6 this is the main way to handle uh queen to c2 and e4 you have two ideas e5 or you can take twice and go queen to f6 now the last thing i do want to get in, in into this show is um the problem with this variation um okay but before we get to that i um we haven't looked at something very key okay one more key thing 
we've looked at different white responses. Now, we've looked at if white tries to play e4. Have we not? Yes, we have. Now, the other thing that white can do, which I don't think is a threat to this, uh, this variation, is if white does not try to play e4, but instead tries to develop his bishop on c1, and in the meantime, control e5. So um, there is a game here. Let me just get it up. Oh, I have to go through the moves again, sorry. But this is a very strong players here. But I think black played some mistakes in this game. I'll go for the opening moves. And this game, black played e6 first. Don't think it really matters. And then g6, the Christmas tree. And okay, these are the right players for the game. Our main position is here. And now b3. So what should we do against b3? Okay. Let, what would you play? Your opponent has just played b3. What would you play here after b3 uh, in this position? Uh, what would you play here? So white wants to play bishop b2 and control e5. What would you play here? And this is, I, I love playing against this line, by the way. This is one of the real advantages. I don't think b3 is a very good move. I think black is now equal. Um... Now, you might be able to play knight to c6. That's interesting because is d5 possible? Maybe d5 is still possible. Then knight to e4. This is complicated. Maybe maybe knight to c6 is okay, but the line I like to play, and I think this is actually, if you want to keep things simple, always knight to e4, always knight to e4, and knight to e4 again works very well now because our bishop is very good on this diagonal now someone asked earlier what happens if if white ever takes on e4 well the thing here is we can just take back and let's say our bishop is so well placed to attack uh, d4 we should always be okay because something like knight to e1 and now we attack d4 knight to c6 and we can always go d5 and here here black is absolutely fine in these positions nothing to worry about nothing to worry about but the main thing i think that white would play here after knight to e4 is to defend the knight on c3 bishop to b2 i actually had this last week in a rapid play game against the strong armenian player uh, gabriel sagisian sagisian i don't know if you know sagisian he's uh, 20 he was 20 nearly 2700 second of um he was the second of Aronians. But a very simple way to play now is, and it's very simple, it's a bit like one of the first things I showed you in the start of this, this uh, little lecture, is just to play, uh, da, 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 okay, let me get this right in the position, and, uh, is to simply take on C3, and now we have time to prepare the move E5. We can do this in any way we want now because removing these two knights, and this is something you've got to remember, removing your knight on f6 for the knight on c3 nearly always helps you as black because you open up your bishop, you clear some space, and also remember when we played queen e7 before, the knight on c3 was coming to d5. It can't do that now. But probably what I would do if I was black now and this is something, I, it was only a blitz game against Sigisian, so, and I, I drew the game in the end, but I didn't play it. What I would play as black is now knight to c6 now. Because the point is, white cannot stop you playing e5. And we don't have to worry about d5 because a bishop takes c3. I'm sorry, I know I'm going a bit quicker now, but this is, the, this is something. And after knight to c3, we are playing e5 next. And we're at least equal because we can play our e5 move. What does white play here? Let's say, uh, I don't know, rook to c1, e5. We get e5 in. And these endings are always okay. If the, Okay, you can even go check first. We have to go king here. And after the queens come off, these, these endings are very okay for black because you have these two pawns. These two pawns. Now, I'm going to show you to end, end this one hour thing on the Christmas tree Dutch. The problem with this variation, and this is the one uh, variation where I need to do a bit more work. I'm going to try to, in another Simon Says, come back to you and 
come up with some suggestions i'm going to need to do some homework maybe this is where you need to do some homework as well and this is the one problem with it and it, of course it happened to me i was playing uh, in uh novi sad um in uh 2016 against dimitri yakovenko and he found the best line for white everything i've shown you so far is okay for black but this line i'm about to show you and i'll show you the move order i use needs a little bit of work and i'm going to leave you i'm going to end the show with this last variation so i'm just going to go through the moves again and we're going to get to the critical position and the critical line the only way i think that white can get an advantage is by playing rook to e1 first so what do we do we have to stop e4 we play knight to e4 we nearly always go knight to e4 and now the only line i think white can play is queen c2 again if white takes on e4 this is nothing we take and we go d5 and this is this is absolutely okay for black i prefer black so after queen c2 what do we do here well we always take on c3 you can remember this from earlier pawn takes c3 and now e5 but the one problem that i have not been able to find a total solution here is the move e4 and this is the only only move i haven't been able to find is to complete solution now i think i think the one of the best ideas here and in actual fact this scores quite well for black i haven't done enough work on it yet but i think the best move here for black um what well, is a couple of ideas but i mean uh, i think knight to c6 might be the best chance for black here to get equality and um i'll show you what i played in a minute because what i played was very interesting i'm not going to cancel it out yet because it goes with my principle of meeting e4 with f4 we'll come back to that but this might be the best way to play knight to c6 and after knight to c6 pawn takes f5 is the only problem and the point now is if bishop takes f5 queen to b3 and but white has this annoying idea of taking on b7 and playing c5 on the other hand black you as black are very active you have an open f file your bishops are very good your knight is quite good so you know when i was looking at this position i was thinking rook just rook to b8 here and this is how i play in the future the computer gives this position as slightly better for white uh, but i need to analyze this a bit more i mean i I've, I've given you as much as i can so far um but i need to do a bit more homework on this myself but this is the this is the one slightly troublesome line the chances of you getting this are so unlikely and when you're playing black there's often going to be lines which are a little bit difficult to handle is this so bad i'm not sure but this is where this is the one line i just want to warn you because whenever i do anything whenever i do any dvd anything i want to be as honest as possible there's so many authors out there of books and of dvds i'm not going to name names who just show you variations but they they forget to include your opponent's best lines which is just completely horrible so this is the main problem but let's have a look so for example i was looking at some line c5 check king h8 here and now something like pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn and now pawn takes e5 here and this position was something i i was not entirely sure about um i came to the conclusion here that bishop to g4 and things were getting very messy so this is where i'd suggest you were what i actually played in the game against yakovenko which was very interesting let's go back is queen c2 is i played after e4 i played my normal idea of f4 how did yakovenko act against this this is how the game went if i get a chance to play g5 i'm absolutely okay yakovenko now took on f4 and his idea was after taking here he now played bishop to a3 with the idea of playing c5 now my honest impression again in this position is that i think white is slightly better here but it's a very complex position um 
and it's really hard to work out what's going on. I think the best move here would have been knight to c6, when I can later either just try to develop or go g5, g4. And this is still, I don't know, I mean, I think, I've, I think I'd rather be white, I'm being honest, in this position. Uh, because I'll show you what happened when I try to play my brutal idea. Now, the difference between this line and some of the other variations we were looking at is actually now white has a pawn on c3, which helps him because his center is actually more guarded. Some of the other variations, and you can look at this show again, it will be in the archive, just to compare variations, were, it was slightly different. And that means that when I played knight to c6, I was actually attacking your, your pawn on d4 or the white pawn on d4, but I'm no longer doing that. So this is this is something I think needs a little bit more research, but I'm not giving up. I mean, you know, this is a new opening. It hasn't been researched much. You're gonna, you've already had a major head start over your opponents and you are black, so there's gonna be little hurdles to thing. And I just hope you've learned a bit about the Dutch anyway here by, by doing this. But what I played, I played g5 now, and this was quite fun. This was a fun way to play. My opponent now played e5, and now I went g4. And even here, even here, I mean, I really, you know, even this position is quite a lot of fun here to play. I mean, this needs, this needs a lot of major research, but I think it looks very scary for white. But these guys who are strong as Yakovenko, they've done a, probably a lot of work on this. And this is something, again, which needs a bit more research. So I'll be honest, I'm going to leave the show now because I've, I've run over by 15 minutes anyway. And um, I, hopefully I'll come back with some more ideas of that. I, I want to go away and look at these lines myself a little bit more. But I, I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've learn a bit more about the Dutch defense um, and as well as um, uh, as well as like you know as well as giving you some ideas here I, I hope I've given you some general tips uh, and that's uh, that's something uh, to, to know thank you all for all the kind comments yeah a very Merry Christmas to everyone I won't be doing this again I think the next one's on Christmas Day so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be drinking then <laughs> so I won't be I won't I won't be at any state to to be doing this I'll be drinking and eating turkey um but yeah thank you so much and if you want to if you want to help support me then of course I do this is my normal kind of teaching way when I do DVDs they're prepared very in depth and you can go to the chess space shop and of course you can get yourself an early or maybe late Christmas present by buying one of my DVDs from the chess space shop and I've got a lot of opening DVDs there which should help you win and help you help you win improve your chess thank you so much for saying in the chat there that my English DVDs are great and you won a game from using some of my suggestions and I'm here to try to help you guys out so thank you very much uh, and do have a great Christmas do have a great new year and um, good night to you all now and uh, yeah cheers for now good night and goodbye